math is so much fun, so much fun for everyone. Math. Yeah, math. Numbers, symbols, shapes, and signs. We use math all the time. Yeah, math. Well, I'm not going to sing any more of that song, but I did want to start with that to remind you how powerful you are when it comes to teaching children math. I say teachers who love teaching math make children love math. And even if you don't love math, you have to fake it till you feel it. Here's a story that happened last night. I was talking to my 13-year-old grandson, and I said, KJ, what's your favorite thing at school? And he said, math. And that really surprised me because that's never been his favorite subject. And so I said, KJ, why do you like math so much? And he said, my teacher is so cool and she's so much fun and we get to play games and we get to work our, with our friends in groups. So, you know, that's true for a 13-year-old. It's really true for little kids and we just need to make it fun and hands-on and tell them they're mathematicians and tell them it's fun. So, um, I wanted to talk about math tools today and just like my kitchen scissors that I use in a million different ways in the kitchen, I've got some math tools that you can use and they're Simple, easy to make, and um, can use with a variety of age levels and different skill levels. So um, let's get started. And the first one I'd like to share with you is something I call math beads. And so this is a pipe cleaner, and you knot one end, and then let the children insert 10 beads, and then knot the other end. And this would be best to do in a small group so you can kind of guide the children and knot the ends as you do it. And then they take their math beads and this is perfect for counting one to one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Flip it over. Eleven, twelve. So you can count as high as you want, but I like the idea of that one to one as they're saying the number and moving the bead. Now you can also use these for older children. How many ways can you make ten? And they have to separate the beads and call out the different ways to make ten. Another thing that you could use this for is just simple little number stories. I had two pumpkins. My mother got me two more pumpkins. How many do I have all together? Now see, the advantage of something simple like this is every child's got it in their hands. There's ownership here. They're all engaged. It's active learning. It's not what you're doing. It's what they're doing um, as you go along with this. Uh, variation of this for the older children, if you use Wreck and Rec, you could use five white beads and five red beads and tie it in with your wreck and wreck activities. Um, another idea, I think Leanne Towater shared this with me and I, maybe she's watching today, but she actually makes number bracelets and they're color coded and so like um, seven beads on blue pipe cleaners, seven blue beads on the blue pipe cleaners and every child has the different bead, the different bracelet for the different amount and so they can slide it around and decompose these in different ways. And um, it's always nice when you can have them write it down. That just kind of secures it in the brain a little bit. Okay, so second tool I'd like to share with you, um, my number sticks and shape sticks, okay? And a lot of you have seen me use these before with um, alphabet letters, but it's just magnetic numbers and magnetic shapes. And if you never use this glue, E6000, I do not work for the company, I don't make any money, but if you're a teacher and you make things for your class, this is the best glue to use and it's available at all sorts of stores. Um, but anyway, if you made the math numbers, the uh, math sticks, you could pass these out. The children could walk around and try to match their number up with the number in the classroom. They could try to match their number up with the quantity in the classroom. Can you find something that has more than your number? Can you find something that has less? You can play the game, I have, who has, and the first child goes, I have one, who has two? I have two, who has three? If you're doing any of your little finger plays, five little pumpkins sitting on a gate, pass these out, let the children hold these up. Children will get that verbal and oral and then that print connection when you do that. For the older kids, you could call out a number like seven and they have to walk around the room and they have to find somebody whose stick matches up to theirs and makes that number. So just lots of different things you can do with this. And then the, the shape, 
not shapes sticks the same way walk around the room match your shape up you could go on a walk around the school and match up your shapes you could go out on the playground and match up your shapes um, lots of different ways to use these right now the next tool is made with bathroom cups and so um, you just get your bathroom cups and you write the numbers with a permanent marker turn the cups upside down and write the numbers with a permanent marker on the bathroom cups and so the children could take these and spread these out horizontally or they could spread these out match stack these up in order vertically a fun game to play um, that you can make is to take a file folder trace around the bottoms of the cups and then the children take the cups you mix them up and they take the cup and they match up the cup with the correct spot on the game board now a uh, good thing that you can do with these and you don't always, always want to go like one through ten that would be good for your younger children but maybe you're working on the numbers 20 through 40 so it's a way to um, up the game a little bit so to speak with that and then one of my favorite ideas that a teacher shared for these little bathroom cups um, she said she puts the math facts on the sides of the cups and then she puts the answer on a dot card inside and they take the cup and they decide what the answer would be and then they check inside and if they get it right they can use it to build a pyramid well anytime you have a game with self checking that's fun and if children get to build something with it that makes it even more fun and a great way to store these bathroom cups is to get a Pringles can and there you go you're all set to store now another tool and this one took me about 15 minutes to make I got a shower curtain and cut it in half and I, I made a template for the keys and then um, I just um, traced around the template and made it look like a cell phone. And so I've got the prompt at the top, I've got uh, the signs plus minus equal. And then on the keys of the keyboard, um, I have the numbers and the letters, just like you would find on a regular cell phone. And so um, the children would love to use this. They could take a fly swatter and you lay this on the floor and they could take the fly swatter and you could call out a number and they could tap out. Or for the older children, you could take your addition and subtraction flashcards and you put them at the top and um, then they type out the, flat, the math bag and the answer. If you gave them a bean bag, they could throw the younger children could throw the bean bag, identify the number, do that many jumping jacks. Older kids throw two bean bags, add up the number. You could also use these for um, some of your sight words that they could take the fly swatter and they could tap out the word, letters in the sight word. Or the older children could add up what different spelling words are worth. So they type out the spelling word and then they have to add up what it equals. So um, a lot of different things that you can do with that um, cell phone. And it would be really nice if you could get somebody in your school to get some cement paint and paint something similar to that out on one of your play surfaces out on the playground. I'm sure the kids could take balls and play all sorts of games with a big cell phone. Um, and also I have a pattern for a little cell phone and the kids get to design their own cell phone cover and I punch a little hole in this so it's like a viewfinder and they can use it and can you take a picture of a square or can you take a picture of something that starts with L you could use it in many different ways for uh, literacy as well as math and then if all the children had their own um, you could call out a number and they could tap it for the younger children you could call out a letter and they could tap it you could call out what is um, one more than five and they could tap it. You could call out a word problem. You could call out a spelling word and they could type it up. All, all sorts of things with this little cell phone. And this would be a good thing if they each had one and they kept it in their desk. If you've got a few extra minutes, you can pull out your cell phone and play some games. And the next two uh, math tools 
can be used in a similar way. If you've got a few extra minutes before lunch, have them get these things out and use these to reinforce skills. Um, I call these show me cards. And I use these all the time when I taught school. So you can keep these in a half an envelope or the kids can keep them in a zip bag, whatever works for you. And so you write the numbers and you can go zero to 10, you can go one through five, whatever, one through 20, wherever your kids are um, in terms of math. And so they get out their little show me cards and they spread them out on their desk or on the floor in front of them. And then you do similar math activities. So um, you might play the mystery number game. I'm looking for a number that's two more than four, and they would hold it up. Or I'm looking for a number that shows how many days in the week, or um, how many thumbs do you have, and they hold it up. Um, and the good thing about this, when they hold it up, okay, so you're the teacher, and you can glance around the room and you can quickly observe who's got it right and who needs a little more help. And I also like when everybody holds theirs up because children who aren't very sure about the answer, this kind of gives them a little, like a little cheat sheet. And, and to me, if, if kids are looking at somebody else and get the answer that way, that's fine. If they don't know it, they don't know it. But maybe this is going to help them a little bit. So, um, Addition, subtraction games, number stories, <coughs> excuse me, you can even do place value with your show me cards. The zip it bags are similar. This is made with a zip gallon bag and it has to be the one with the little zipper that moves, okay? And you get heavy paper and it's like a number line, write zero to 10 on the bottom, put it in here. When you've got a few extra minutes, boys and girls, get out your zip it bags. I had five cookies for lunch and I ate three of them. How many do I have left? And so they're all busy, they're all thinking, and then they hold it up. And again, you can quickly glance around the room and see who has it. So um, you can use this for um, all sorts of addition, subtraction, um, different number stories, anything you might be working on. Now, the next tool is uh, a math mat. And I wish I had known about this when I taught school because it's perfect um, for addition and subtraction. So it's just a square and you can make it as big as you want. I kind of like to use a file folder because it folds up nicely and it's a good sturdy. Um, you cut it so it's a 12 inch square and you make a line down the middle and then you cut this top section into two. And you explain that this line is like the equal sign in math or the same as what's up here has to be the same as what's down here. And so um, you can do all sorts of number stories. And um, I, I don't know if you've ever used ma um, poker chips for math manipula manipulatives, but I, I just love the way they sound. Um, but let's say, let's put two in this square and let's put one in this square and then bring them down together, how many all together. So very visual hands-on way to do addition or subtraction problems. Older kids have them write out the equation after you do it. Um, this is also really helpful when you do the missing add-in. Like, um, I have, um, I have nine, I have five cookies, I have nine friends, how many more do I need to have enough for all of my friends? So we put nine down here, and we know we have five, how many more do we need? So again, it's a very concrete way to help them figure out that missing number. And I'm sure a lot of you have um, used these little pals plates and uh, food for addition and subtraction problems similar to the math mat that they put the different amounts and then bring them down together. Um, and then one more little addition tool, the children trace around their hands and cut them out and you glue their hands so you've just got the palm glued and then the fingers can move. And so you can use the little fingers, you can use the little fingers to count. For your younger children, you can use these for your finger plays. In fact, for four-year-olds, I'd probably just use one hand and use it for all my little finger plays with five. Um, but for your kindergarten children, you could use this and um, you could do like um, two plus th three 
equals how many, and they put the fingers down, and then uh, a very concrete way to see the amount. And again, have them write it down. I have a little game that's really fun to play this time of year. It's called Bats in a Cave, and I just took a styrofoam bowl and cut, uh, I mean, colored a little arch in it so it looks like a cave. And then, reason I like to do this this time of year, all those little bat rings or spider rings, and you lay these out, and we've got, let's see, there's five um, bats. Now I want you to hide your eyes, hide your eyes, everybody, no peeping. And you take some bats and put them in the cave. And then, how many bats are outside? Three. How many bats are in the cave? And they, if they tell you the answer, then you say, how did you know that? I found in math, if one child will say the answer, and then you say, how did you know that? And when you first ask them that, they go, mm, I don't know, I just knew that. But it's called thinking out loud. If you can get them to think out loud and say something like, well, you have three bats out there, and so there must be two bats inside because... You have five fingers, you know, whatever their answer is. It helps the younger children scaffold to that level. So bats in the cave is such fun to play. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen these little math bags where you take a zip bag, draw a line down the middle, and you put flat objects and the children count and then they move the objects from one side to the other and show the different combinations like this one. I have eight lima beans and we can slide them back and forth and say we've got five lima beans and three lima beans. Young children don't have what they call a conservation of quantity. And so these things really help them develop that and see different combinations that make that. Okay, now I've got a little tool for measurement. This is called a bean counter. It's a piece of clear packaging tape with 10 lima beans laid end to end. You fold up the top, you fold up the bottom, seal it a little bit, snip it off, and you've got a bean counter. Why do I like the bean counter? Because inches are abstract for young children. An inch doesn't mean anything to them. But a bean is real and it's concrete. And so they lay their bean counter up to different objects and they count how many beans. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six beans long. So you can count lots of different objects. If you um, want to know how long your room is, the reason I use 10 is that you can lay them side by side and you can count by tens, see how many beans long your room is. Now, another measurement idea with this is, you know, take your bean counter, can you find something that is two beans long? And so, not only just to measure, but as, at this point you're estimating, they have to walk, what, is, what would be two beans long? And they walk around until they find something that measures up and is two beans long. Um, you could also say, can you find something longer than your bean counter? Can you find something shorter than your bean counter? So they're actively walking around the room using their own little tools. And they're all busy, and they're all engaged, and they're all doing something. Um, just a few more math tools because I'm not supposed to go over when I do these um, Facebook lives, but I have so much to share with you. A deck of cards. I mean, it's incredible how many math games you can play with a deck of cards. Take out the face cards and then you can use these for sorting and patterning and, and who has more and who has less. And um, another fun thing to do with these cards is to give each child two cards and they have to come up with a number story about their cards. I know a lot of you have seen me talk about the highway letters. Well, you can also do highway numbers, and you can download these at makinglearningfun.com. And by the way, I know somebody's going to send me an email, uh, uh, put a note on Facebook that you're holding things up backwards. Well, when you do Facebook Live, they're backwards, but my webmaster will do a little magic, and so if you come back tomorrow, I'll have um, a revised video that you can watch where they're the right way. So anyway, um, you've got your highway numbers. They can take a car and they can drive around the car. They can take Play-Doh and roll it and put it on here. You can pass these out and um, how, can you find somebody that will be a friend of 10? So they have to find somebody that will equal 10. They can get an order. You can use these when you sing your songs, finger plays, different things like that. Um, and 
All of these ideas will be on my blog, drjeanandfriends.blogspot.com. Over the next week, each day, I will have these math tools, how to make them, and activities to do with them. Don't have time today, but certainly the 10 frame is a wonderful tool. Wreck and wreck, and you don't have to buy those. You can make those yourself, and I have directions for that. And then dot cards. I mean, what's not to love about dot cards? And you can download these free off the internet as well. Just two more little tools. Um, I was doing a workshop one time, and this teacher told me that all of her children had math boxes. And so um, I, I'm not sure if the parents put in the materials for this or, you know, as the children made these different things, they had them in there. But every child had a math bo box, and then if they finished math early, they could get their math box and do the different activities. And they're just simple things like dice and, and a, a, a tape measure. Oh, my goodness. Kids love these. And so just things that you could um, ask parents to get at the dollar store. Um, but they would certainly love their own little math box. And then the last idea is a math office. And um, this might be a good thing to do in January just to perk things up a little bit. It's two file folders taped together. And then you put the different things that you're working on in math, maybe a hundreds chart or days of the week or months of the year or um, I've got a math mat on the back. I've got a clock. Again, adapt these to the skill level of your students and what you're working on. And then um, one teacher even suggested putting your little um, math beads at the top so children could use these. So when they do their math, they get out, get out their math office and they set up their math office and they are mathematicians with their math office. Well, before I go, I have to tell you something exciting. We have... Um, a few little guacamole um, October songs coming up. One of them um, is called Autumn Avocado, and that is for you teachers who are not allowed to do Halloween in your school. So I've got raking leaves and um, making pumpkin pies and football and items like that. And then the other one is called... Um, uh, Halloween avocado or something like that and that one has mummies and um, scary things some silly things that children would like to do so um, in the next couple days my webmaster will put magic on those and we will have those posted for you and then just to close with um, a little advertisement uh, that Carolyn and Kislowski and I if you haven't checked out our um, I'm only for the Ultimate Center Guide for Pre-K, and then we also have, each month we have a packet with October Happies or November Happies, all sorts of activity songs, things to make school more fun. So, thank you so much for joining me. I hope I've made math a little bit more fun for you. And um, I'll close with this. I want you to all feel your forehead. Do you feel it? I think you do. You all have math fever now. Thanks for joining me. Have a good night.